Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said he is, uh, he said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on the mark. No, not the book of Mark, which is an excellent book, I think, but uh, no, the, the Mark. The first time a word appears in the King James Bible usually gives you an indication of the context and the meaning of the word. So where's the first time that Mark, uh, uh, as in a sign like a sign appears well Genesis chapter 4 and verse 15 Cain had murdered Abel so let's read that and the Lord said unto him therefore whosoever slayeth Cain vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold and the Lord set a mark upon Cain lest any finding him should kill him. Very interesting. So what is what does this word mean? Well, in Strong's, according to the Blue Letter Bible, it is uh, A sign, a signal, a distinguishing mark, banner, remembrance, sign, yeah, omen, warning, token, ensign, standard. Uh, you know, that's basically what it uh, has reference to do. Now, I don't like the Blue Letter Bible because it's from Chuck Missler. It should be Chuck missile er because he was into defense contracting. And he was one of the founding members of Calvary Chapel, which, you know, if you think Calvary Chapel's a good Christian church, I I don't know. Maybe the Lord hasn't given you any discernment. I don't know. But uh, I have a different opinion about Calvary Chapel. Now, the thing is, a lot of people like Strong's Concordance, but the old Strong's Concordance and the new ones have been changed. For example, the word Adam, Hebrew word uh, number 119, 120, 121, and I think 122 also, was a racial description. The modern versions just say, up oh, the first man. So they are changing things. And Zondervan, which is the largest publisher of religious books in the English-speaking world, is owned by HarperCollins that prints gay porn and the Church of Satan Bible, well, the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan, whose parent company in turn is the Fox Network. Yeah, Fox TV, Rupert Murdoch, that wonderful group of people. Uh, that's just Zondervan, you know. But, uh, and then you got Henry Thayer's theological, uh, I'm not sure if it's a dictionary, but uh, Thayer, T-H-A-Y-E-R. He was what was called a Unitarian. He didn't even believe Jesus uh, he didn't believe 1 Timothy 3.16 where it says God was manifest in the flesh. He didn't believe that. No, Jesus is just, you know, I guess he's just another person like us. And he realized his divinity. He realized he could be God. That's sort of kind of what the Unitarians believe. They think we're all gods. Uh, I don't think so. But you know, they don't use the King James Bibles because that destroys their uh, theology. Ah, 
do like the Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, wait, you know, we teach this, but the uh, King James says that, which proves us wrong. So we're going to have to come up with the New World Order translation, which they did in 1964. Get rid of the King James that they'd used for, I don't know, over 50 years. Uh, and then you've got uh, another Bible standard, a guy named Kittle, K-I-T-T-E-L, I think. And uh, he was a member of the Nazi party, an early member of the Nazi party under Hitler. And if you think Hitler was a Christian, well, you probably won't like my channel. Because if Hitler was a Christian doing God's work, Germany would have won World War II. So, you know, he was a politician. You know, it's sort of like Trump. You know, before the election, he says, oh, I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and this, and this is what I believe, and I'm going to do that, 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 and that. And then after the election, uh, everything's forgotten. Well, he does, they do the opposite. Yeah, I don't think people should be, it sh I don't think vaccines should be mandatory. And then after the election, well, the military is going to vaccinate people in a powerful way. Yeah. So, yeah, Hitler was sort of kind of like that. Say one thing, do another. So, all the, uh, all the, uh, so when you go looking for word definitions in these modern lexicons and dictionaries and uh, what have you, you're learning from people that didn't even believe what the scholars of old believed and I mean really you want to trust somebody that prints the satanic Bible and gay porn to tell you what words mean really you know Sodomite oh well that's just somebody that lived in Sodom and God didn't destroy Sodom because of their wicked deeds it was because they were they weren't being kind to strangers. Yeah, wanting to rape, anally rape angels is not being kind to strangers. Yeah, so God rained fire and brimstone down on them. And, uh, you know, a, a, an abomination sex act was named after Sodom. And then a venereal disease was named after Gomorrah. I mean, you know, I think, I think the scholars of old had more brains. Well, they were believers. That was the thing. They were believers, and today's people are deceivers. So who do you want to believe? Believers or deceivers? Yeah. Me, I'm a believer. Now, Webster's 1828 Dictionary... The guy that uh, knew over 20 different Bible, uh, languages, including the biblical languages of Greek and Hebrew, uh, he was a true linguist, a Bible and a language scholar. This guy knew his stuff. He standardized spelling. He wrote some really good uh, stuff for the schools, but uh, they got rid of that stuff, like, I think around the 20s or the 30s when the... Uh, or probably around the time of the U.S. Department of Education. Oh, wait a minute, that was written by a Christian. We can't use that. You know, that'll warp people's minds. Mark, noun, Latin, mercor, um, a visible line made by drawing on substance on another as a mark made, made by chalk, chalk or charcoal or a pen. A line, groove, or depression made by stamping or cutting an incision. An incision. An incision. A cut, right? A channel or impression as the mark of a chisel or a stamp or a rod or a whip. The mark of the finger or foot. Any sign of distinction. Um, and any apparent or intelligible effect, proof, or evidence. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
All right. Um, I think that's, uh, oh, okay, here we go. It is also a transitive verb. Uh, it says, Mark, to notice, to take particular observation of, as in Romans 16, 17, mark them that cause divisions and offenses. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Psalms 37, 37. Uh, to heed, to regard to point out. The ringleaders were marked out for seizure and punishment. Um, so you get the idea, right? So Cain was marked as a murderer. And, you know, I wondered why they did, you know, the punishment for murder in the Old Testament was death, capital punishment. But the Lord didn't do that for uh, Cain. So there's a, there's a little something going on there. But this is not going to be for that study. All right, so that's the first time that the word mark not a not a name appears in the Bible. Now in the book of Ruth, um, in verse three, uh, chapter three and verse four, Ruth was told, and it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. In other words, pay attention. You know, like you make a mark on a map. Oh, okay, I want to go from, uh, let's say, New York City to Dallas, Texas. And you put a mark on the map. Thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay down there, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. Um, this guy was uh, had some land, and I guess Ruth, uh, her... Husband had died, and um, this guy that she laid down at his feet, he was, uh, he left the outside of his field. They didn't harvest the outside of the field. They left that for the poor of the land, which is something the Bible says to do. You know, don't harvest everything. Leave something for the poor of the land. And they would let the poor of the land go in and carry as much as they could so that they, you know, they'd have something to eat. Treasures in heaven, people, you know? How many people do that today, you know? How many churches actually uh, have food banks? Man, I've been to places and, and uh, food, well, there are some places that have food banks, but instead of helping the people of God, they help the enemies of the people of God if you catch my drift they feed the enemies they feed the invaders yeah I found that out so all right let's see let's keep going with this mark thing here now if you were uh, in 1 Samuel 20 20 uh, he said, and I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof as though I shot at a mark. You ever heard the expression, I missed the mark? Well, the mark would have been the bullseye, right? Of a, If you were shooting at a target. Yeah, I missed the mark. So, you know, that's the thing. Sometimes words have multiple meanings. And then you got to figure out, you know, which one applies. Sometimes sometimes things have double meanings it's sometimes more than one meaning it's so but i trust the king james translators those people they were scholars matter of fact one of the um king james translators was a greek scholar and he was pretty fairly young 
and he was um, tutoring people in Greek at, I forget which university, it was either Oxford or Cambridge. I mean, that's how good he was. He, he's, he's tutoring students in uh, Greek, classical Greek. I mean, our education system is so garbage compared to what it used to be back in the old days. So, all right, let's take a look at Job 7 and verse 17. Job asks, What is man that thou shouldest magnify him, and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him, and that thou shouldest visit him every morning and try him every morning? How long wilt thou not depart from me, nor let me alone, till I swallow down my spittle? I have sinned. Those are probably the three most uh the three words that the Lord loves to hear from us the most. I have sinned. And you better not be bragging. No. I have sinned. Forgive me. You know, I will turn away from it. That's that's what the Lord wants to hear. I have sinned. What shall I do unto thee, O thou preserver of men? Why hast thou set me as a mark against thee? so that I am a burden to myself. Why hast thou set me as a mark against thee, so that I am a burden to myself? And why dost thou not pardon my transgression and take away mine iniquity? Well, that was what Christ was, came to do, right? For now shall I sleep in the dust, and thou shalt seek me in the morning, but I shall not be. Well, I was not going to uh, read this whole thing, but after looking at it, I think I should read the whole thing. How about Psalms chapter 37? This whole chapter looks really good. Now, there's, there's a mark that the Lord puts upon you, and then there's going to be a mark, a counterfeit mark, that the beast is going to put upon them. So, you know, and the thing is, all these people that believe in the pre-trib rapture, they're going to fall for it because they don't think they're going to be here for the mark. So when the mark arrives, they're going to say, oh, pfft, this isn't the mark. We're not going to be here. We're going to be raptured out of here. So it hasn't come yet. You know, false theology has consequences, some more severe than others. And you know, I'm so tired of hearing these people rebuke me for trying to warn them. Of course, I think most of them are Satanists, but I don't know. Who am I? What am I? I you know, like I say, I'm just some guy that's read the Bible a couple of times. That's all I am. But the thing is, the mark of the Lord or the mark of the beast? They're going to make a choice. And I, uh, there's a thing about this, uh, where the Lord talks about his servants are sealed. I'm not exactly sure if being sealed is exactly the mark or not. I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure they're interconnected somehow but to what extent I'm not sure perhaps at the end of this Bible study when I get down more to it I'll know the difference but all right with that being said let's go read Psalms 37 a psalm of David fret not thyself because of evildoers neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity that's right, because the, the workers of evil, uh, they usually have money and stuff, right? And, uh, and they have no scruples, I guess you could say, when it comes to defrauding the widows and the fatherless. You know, wasn't it uh, 
Jim Baker that uh, defrauded a bunch of people and uh, went to prison. And he's back in the ministry. I'm sure he said his little, rip, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, and his little crocodile tears. And now he's starting a uh, Bible end time, Armageddon end time uh, Bible community in Arkansas, no, Arkansas or Missouri, Missouri. Yeah, I'm sure I want to go there. Yeah. And then you got, um, what was it, Jim Staley defrauded a bunch of people. Yeah, he's got a prison ministry now. <laughs> he's in prison. Yeah. Yeah. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily shalt uh, thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise. To do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be, yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth. Huh, where have we read that before? Oh, yeah. Jesus said that on the Sermon on the Mount, right? Or the Beatitudes? Ah, I forget. All I know is Jesus said it. I believe it. That settles it. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Why? Because Christ is... The king is going to be the prince of peace. Verse 12. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him. <laughs> I love that. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. Oh yeah, your day is coming, you evildoers. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. I can attest to that. Not that I'm righteous. 17. For the arms, uh, I'm sorry, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken. But the up, uh, Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. This is an evil time, people. Oh, boy. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. Hmm. So while the world's in famine, I guess the Lord's people will be fed physically, spiritually. But the wicked shall perish. And the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, 
shall they consume away. Remember, the earth is going to be burned up. And uh, those of you that do barbecue, what happens to fat that drips into the fire? It just burns up, right? The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as he blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Wow. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. That's right. The wicked watch the righteous. They want to, and they want to, they want to kill you. Why? Because they want to take what little you have. Because they're greedy dogs, they never have enough. Never. They could have a ton of gold, and they would want two. And then when they get two, they want five. And then they would want ten. It never stops with them. Verse 33, The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power, and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passeth away, and lo, he was not, yea, I sought him, but he could not be found." All right, Psalms 37, 37. Listen carefully. Mark the perfect man. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. See, the Lord will mark the perfect man. Well, the only perfect man was Christ, but uh, by his righteousness, well, I hope you know the rest of the story. Mark the perfect man and uphold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors, transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. All right, turn your Bibles to the book of Ezekiel, and we're going to look at chapter 9. Probably read, we might read the whole chapter, I don't know. We'll take a, I'll take a look. But uh, the thing is, usually when you're reading the New Testament, and you don't know what something means, uh, sometimes you can go back to the Old Testament and it will explain. There are instances when the Old Testament's explained by the New Testament. There's quite a few uh, instances of, of that. For example, the promised Redeemer. Well, in the Old Testament, you know, they were wondering, well, 
who is this promised redeemer? And then John the Baptist appears on the scene and tells you, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. So, without further ado, let's read Ezekiel chapter 9. Now, a little background first. Uh, Ezekiel is was a prophet, considered a major prophet because of the size of the book. But uh, if memory serves me correctly, he was a contemporary with Jeremiah. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe so. And uh, he pronounced judgment upon God's people for their wickedness. I mean, he could be living today and it be, wouldn't be any different, right? I mean, you know, back, if you went back to 200 years ago, um, 250 years ago, you know, they would not have tolerated sodomites getting married. They wouldn't have tolerated prayer and Bible study being taken out of the public schools. Harvard University, which was founded as a Bible college with a uh, Antichrist president, would not be offering classes in uh, how, how to have anal sex. I mean, really? And... and you know, so Ezekiel was crying out by the power of the Holy Spirit against wickedness among the people and the leadership. So he's pronouncing judgment, just like Jeremiah did. Ezekiel is very similar to Jeremiah. Matter of fact, of all the books in the Bible, I think Ezekiel's probably the uh, the wildest. Because uh, people read uh, chapter 1, and it talks about the throne of God, and they say, see, see, that's proof. UFO, aliens, they came down in spaceships. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't think so. But, who am I? All right, Ezekiel 9, verse 1. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. So here is judgment coming. They're gonna, the Lord's going to send destruction upon them. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. So I guess that's like the old uh, quill, a, uh, a quill pen, you know, a feather, and they dip it in the ink. I, I guess that's sort of that kind of an, an analogy with a writer's inkhorn by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. So here it is, there by the temple, in the temple. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house, and he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Listen carefully. I'm going to read it twice. Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that are done in the midst thereof. This is going to be the mark of the Lord. The marks, the Lord is having this being set a mark upon those that cry and sigh because of all the abominations, the evils that are being done. These are the people that are feeling 
horrible about all the wicked stuff going on in Jerusalem. And the Lord said unto him, go through, uh, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark, set a mark, a mark of God, set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Okay? Now, think about it. The Lord is marking his people for protection against the coming judgment. Those that don't have the mark of the Lord are in big trouble. Sort of like, remember in the first Passover, those that had the blood of the lamb on the lentils of the doorposts of the door, the destroying angel, the angel of death, the death angel, if he didn't see the blood on the door, the death angel went into that house and killed the firstborn. Oh, yeah. And think about it. If, if, the, uh, if the wife was the firstborn of her mother, and if the father was the husband, was the firstborn of of his family and if they had a child that was their firstborn you could lose the husband the wife and the child all three of them you could it was, I'm sure it might have happened I'm sure it did all the firstborn of Egypt that didn't have the blood of the lamb marked on the post were killed were slaughtered Think about that. All the firstborn. Firstborn of the cattle. All the firstborn. There was a lot of burying going on in Egypt. And guess what? Pharaoh still did not get the message. But if they had the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, the angel of death passed over that house. He didn't go in. So I guess that, in a way, is sort of kind of like a mark, right? So, the Lord says, Set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Those that are, you know, they're, they're unhappy with all the abominations. They have a conscience. Verse 5. And to the others, he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Strike them down dead. Kill them all. If they don't have the mark, kill them. That's the Bob translation. And to the others, he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eye spare, neither have ye pity. Don't spare them. Don't have any pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Oh, yeah. So guess what? You know where they started? God's house, the temple. What does 1 Peter 4.17 say? Oh, you can't tell this to a pre-tribber. Uh-uh, they won't listen to you. For the time has come that judgment, judgment must begin at the house of God. What? Oh, no. You know, and they don't even understand the difference between judgment and wrath. They do not understand the difference. Why? Because, well, if my pe preacher doesn't, my pastor, if he, if he doesn't say it, it's not in the Bible. It doesn't belong there. It's not true. And I'm too busy watching football. Well, football got canceled this year, I guess, uh, because of the, uh, the beer, right? 
For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? Good question. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Verse 7. And he said unto me, Defile the house, and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth, and slew in the city. And it came to pass, while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face, and cried, and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood. In other words, it's full of murder. Sounds like Chicago. Do you know Chicago's the murder capital of the United States? They average two murders a day. Two murders a day average in Chicago. Sounds like a wonderful place to live, doesn't it? Yeah. And the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. In other words, oh, the Lord took off. He doesn't see what's going on. We can do whatever we want. Yeah, um, that's how they think. And as for me also, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. So, the Lord put a mark upon his people. So, Cain had a mark, and the righteous in Ezekiel here also had a mark. Is it the same type of mark? I don't know. Bible doesn't give you enough detail, at least that I can find, you know. And I don't trust Hebrew dictionaries and lexicons and concordances, um, you know. But that's just me. I'm uh, very skeptical. All right, let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 16 and verse 16. Paul writes, Salute one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Churches, plural. And there's a church over in Rome that says they're the Holy Mother Church. Yeah, I don't think so. Verse 17, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Huh, sounds like uh, stay away from the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons, right? Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them, which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the dark doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not, serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. So God sets a mark. And we're supposed to have a mark also. So, there you go. Let's go to Philippians. All right, let's take a look at uh, Philippians ch chapter 3 and verse 13. Now, Philippi was a city in Greece, you know. But uh, the Hebrew roots people will tell you, well, you know, they, yeah, they were, they, they, you know, the New Testament was written in Hebrew, and then 
Mistranslated into Greek, I don't think so. I don't think the Philippians spoke Hebrew. And Paul, Paul knew Hebrew and at least Greek. And when he spoke to the Roman soldier, he possibly could have been speaking to them in Latin. He was probably trilingual. You know, Greek, Hebrew, and Latin. Paul, Paul was a scholar. So, verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. In other words, go forward. Don't look at the things in, in the past, the back. Move forward. Move ahead. Look to the future. You know, your future in Christ, right? Verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded and in anything ye be otherwise minded God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless where, where to we have already attained let us walk by the same rule let us mind the same thing. Brethren be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Do you know anybody, a group of people that are enemies of the cross of Christ? Do you know there's a certain country in the Middle East that on their calculators they won't have a plus sign because it, it's a cross. No, they use a T for total. Yeah, and it's not an Arab country. And now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Now, remember, God has a mark, and Satan, the devil, has a mark also. He's a great counterfeiter. He counterfeits everything. Uh, for example... Back when I was a kid, we had silver coins. I remember in elementary school, Dad would give me a quarter, silver quarter. It was the one with the, the, the man with the walking with the cane. I would get a, a lunch and a milk and get a nickel back. And then I could take that nickel and run to 7-Eleven and get a candy bar. I mean, like a Hershey's or a Snickers or a Mars. I mean, you know, can you imagine getting a lunch in school for 20 cents and a milk? Can you imagine that? I remember that because dad would give me a, a quarter every day and it was silver back, back in the early 60s when I first started going to school. Well, them days are gone. Now we got the great counterfeiter gives you a uh, paper. Yeah which is soon going to collapse, and uh, I'm sure they'll implement something different. Uh, digital currency, anybody? Mark of the Beast, maybe? I'm not sure. But I'll tell you what, if you can't buy or sell without it, you're going to know what it is. 
And almost everybody's going to fall for it. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. Boy, I've beat this chapter to death, but we're going to read it again because that's what this, this study's on, the mark. I, gotta, uh, uh, I have to treat each lesson as though, you know, somebody's a first-time listener. You know, those of you that have listened to hundreds of my studies, well, guess what? Yeah, you've heard it a bunch of times. I'm, so what can I tell you? And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and the deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. That's about three and a half years, people. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Oh, but the church isn't mentioned in the Bible after chapter 4, the pre-tribbers lie and say. Who do you think these saints are? Unbelieving you-know-whos? No. No, these are not unbelievers. These are believers in Jesus Christ. This is the church, the saints. And it was given unto him to make war, war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. Oh yeah, he looks like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders. Miracles, people. He's going to be able to do miracles. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Who else did this? Elijah did this. I've got a study on Elijah. One hour and 40 minutes long. And it ties in this, you, you watch, the false prophet will probably call himself Elijah. And I bet you the beast will call himself or be called Yeshua. You watch. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. Miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. Which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. 
and he causeth all, all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. See, there's a mark of God, and there's a mark of the beast. The great counterfeiter, the devil, the dragon, the devil and Satan. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Six, six, six. When you look up the mark in the Greek, matter of fact, let's take a look at the number of the mark. Uh, I mean, the um, what the word mark means in the Greek. We read the Hebrew when the Lord put a mark upon Cain. Let's look at what it means in Greek. Well, in the Greek, it's uh, karagma. It's from... Uh, one of the root words is uh, Greek 5482 in the, the Strong's. And it means a stamp, an imprinted mark, um, like a brand put upon horses or cattle. You know, a brand, they brand them. Back in the West, they would take a, the owner's mark, the brand, a thing carved, sculpture, graven work, or a, an idolatrous image. A scratch or etching. Um, it also has reference to um, something, well, an etching. What do you, you know, if you were, if you had like a tattoo etched into your skin, something along that a line okay all right revelation chapter 14 let's take a look at verse 9 now there's this guy famous preacher called john macarthur and uh i saw him on a video a clip somebody sent me or i found on my own i i don't remember but he said if uh, if a truly if a if a Christian takes the mark of the beast, don't worry about it because because of eternal security, you're saved. He said basically a, you, a Christian could take the mark of the beast, and because of eternal security, they're going to be saved. Well, and then uh, he kind of backpedaled on that. And then everybody that was uh, showing the clip on YouTube, his church was actively seeking it out and doing copyright strikes so that they could remove it. And then he, because he backpedaled on that. But what does the Bible say about can you take the mark? Revelation 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, which is poured out full strength, industrial strength, not diluted, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. What's indignation? Extreme hatred, people. Which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. 
Gee, MacArthur, I think you're wrong. What do you think, people? All right. Well, guess what? In Revelation chapter 16, what happens to those that take the mark of the beast? Revelation 16, 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Now, from what I understand, I took electronics in, uh, back, back in the day, and I worked for some electronics companies. I worked for Rodime, if you ever heard of them. I worked for Seagate, if you've ever heard of Heard, uh, work, you know, heard of them. Um, I worked for electronics companies for at least, oh, I don't know, at least a year or two. I'm, uh, from what I understand, they use lithium for the power of the uh, the chips that they're using for uh, for like for dogs for the uh, identification. And when those things break, they cause a very horrible sore, the lithium. So, and for what I understand, they cause cancer in that spot. A lot of dogs have been getting cancer in the spot where they, you know, you've heard of the, the dogs getting chipped, the identification chips. Now, I don't know if that's going to be the mark of the beast. I, I'm not saying it is, but I'm just pointing that out that, you know, they're getting sores a grievous sore in the spot where they have these little chip things so what can i tell you all right so those that have the mark there's they're going to have a sore um now there's people i know i've mentioned it before but there's a group of people called preterists and a lot of them think that all this stuff that happened in Revelation is all past. Everything is in the Revelation, uh, everything in the Bible happened in the past. And right now we're living in Christ's kingdom, uh, and Christ is ruling and reigning in our hearts. Huh. In Revelation 16:3. It says, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. Uh, this happened in the past? Really? When? Where is it recorded in history? I can't find it. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. You know, so you can keep reading all this stuff. And, uh, you know, it just doesn't make sense. All this stuff happening in the past, I don't think so. No. So what happens to those that take the mark? Well, Revelation 19 and verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which had, uh, with which he uh, deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. But what about those that don't take the mark? Well, that's in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them 
that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And this people is the mere introduction to the kingdom. The thousand years. That's the mere introduction. So, I, what is the mark? I don't know. I really don't. But you know what? Your uh, ID 2020, your the new driver's licenses, they have a chip in them. Your Visa cards, your MasterCard, your ATM cards, they have chips. You know, chip cards. I mean, they're putting uh, microchips in dogs. Uh, digital angel. Digital angel. I'm sure it's one of the fallen angels. Uh, does this tie into artificial intelligence? AI? Could be. You know, I don't claim to be a prophet. But if it comes down to it that you can't buy or sell without something our evil, wicked governments are peddling, you'll know what it is. And people are going to have a choice. Take it or die. But I think in Revelation 12, there's going to be a remnant in the wilderness. And the Lord is going to take care of them, I think. I don't know if I'll be one of them. I don't know. All I know is, for some reason, the Lord picked this time in history for me to live. I don't know why, but uh, His ways are not our ways. So, trust in the Lord, people. Stay close. Things are going to get bumpy on the road. Jesus said, narrow is the way. Narrow. And, you know, and few, few there be that find it. The remnant's going to be small, people. All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, the Jesus who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Him and Him alone. In Jesus' precious name, Amen.